Hey guys, today on Poor Man Pedals, we're checking out some gear from CAD Audio. Hey guys, welcome back to Poor Man Pedals. Today is a very awesome and a little unique episode for us here at Poor Man Pedals. Uh, I reached out to some people at Cat Audio and they were kind enough to send me a couple of things to check out for the channel. Uh, they were kind enough to send out a wireless system for guitars uh, and they were also kind enough to send out the connect to audio interface. This is one in particular I, uh, I was glad to receive because it's a very affordable audio interface and I wanted to showcase something that would help you guys be able to record on a, on a very affordable budget. Um, so I'm very excited to show that off and I, I'm hoping that everything works out just as I've planned. Uh, before we go much farther, I do want to ask you guys, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also remember to use our affiliate links to Sweetwater, Toman, and Amazon down in the description below. That is a great way to support the channel at no additional cost to you. You can go about, do your normal shopping, and we get a cut of it. It doesn't raise your prices or anything, and it supports the channel. It's absolutely great. So without further ado, let's get back to CAD Audio though. Uh, once again, huge thank you to the guys at CAD Audio for sending uh, these items out to me. Um, what I wanna do is I'm going to take my guitar, plug it into my ABY uh, pedal from Donner, and then I'm going to feed one and into my normal interface, which is the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. It's a first generation model. And then the other line I'm gonna send here into the CAD audio. And we'll be able to do some uh, direct comparisons to see how well the Connect 2 works for recording. I think that we're all gonna be a little surprised. This is less than $100. Scarlet's cost over $100. Uh, I think I, when I bought mine, it was about $130, $140. I think the latest ones are about $160, $170. So this is significantly less. And if it does a good job, then this is going to be a great tool for anyone to just do some basic recording. So some a real quick overview with of the Connect 2. You got two inputs. Uh, these are great design. I love this design. They can be used for XLR, so for microphones, or you can just plug in a normal uh, quarter-inch cable like your guitar cable or a line out from a, from like a Boss Katana can go directly into there. Then you can switch between instrument and line. You've got your gain here. You've got, it looks like these are going to be lights for clip and signal, it looks like. Uh, and it's just repeated here. Then you've got your direct monitor switch. You would plug your headphones into here. I highly recommend getting a decent pair of studio headphones. The ones that I currently use are Sennheiser HD 380s. I think I'll, I'll try to put a link in the description below with the ones that I currently have, if they're still available. Uh, you have your line outputs. This controls if you have studio monitors set up, which on the back you have your line outputs to go out to studio monitors. This controls how loud those are. You also have a separate volume control for your headphones right here. Then on the back, we already covered the line outputs. You've also got your USB port. This right here, it's a USB-C. And it comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable so that you can plug into your laptop, into your desktop computer, into whatever device you're using, really, and uh, be able to record. Then right here, this is the magical phantom power switch to turn on or off the 48 volts needed for condenser microphones. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on this. I am also going to check out these guys. 
Uh, this is just the wireless uh, system from CAD Audio. It reminds me a lot of the X Vive wireless system that I already tried out, and we'll talk about that. I'm also gonna go ahead and uh, use these. I'm gonna use these for my main uh, output from the guitar into the ABY jack. Um, and we'll kind of just go from there and see how everything works. <laughs> Okay, guys, that does it for the Connect 2 from CAD Audio, um, or the CX2, if you look on the back. Overall, I really like this thing. It's affordable. <laughs> it's only about $70, uh, I believe, and it's really good. Um, the housing here, this part feels like it's aluminum. Um, the front plate does feel like it's plastic and same with the back plate so nothing too fancy there um overall i thought it it sounded fine it had plenty of headroom which was really really nice uh if you notice on the on the focus right i couldn't really adjust the the gain knob on the guitar track um without it starting to go orange and red which you really want to be careful with that clipping so meanwhile here i got to turn it up halfway uh even a little over halfway and the little clip light didn't come up so that was absolutely great great experience very affordable i think i can recommend this if you're looking for an affordable interface um and you don't need more than two inputs um and if you'd like to hear more about recording and stuff, let me know, and maybe we can talk about that more. Um, I think I think it would be a lot of fun to do things like uh, talk about a mixer versus a, an interface or uh, just looking at a few other things. Um, that being said, uh, something overall, I really, really, really did like this. The... Um, the one of my 
big one of my complaints is the light system that they have uh i mean they have clip and signal right there that's so small <laughs> um that that's one of the big advantages of going with something like the the scarlet is that um around the gain knob is just a ring of light so it's very noticeable Whereas it, it felt kind of hard to see the clip and signal lights flash up. There were a few times I wasn't quite sure if I was seeing the clip so, uh, light or not. Um, so I, I do wish that they would improve that in some way. That being said, overall, I really like this. Um, for 70 bucks, if you want to start recording, highly, highly recommend. Now, I do want to make a point of order. Uh, earlier I had mentioned that I was going to be using the wireless system, uh, into the ABY, uh, path. I ended up not doing that. Um, I did a little bit of testing and, um, I'm not terribly impressed with these. Uh, they feel like super cheap plastic. They're lightweight, which is not bad, um, I mean, I compared it with like the the other wireless system I got years ago, the X Vive, and they felt roughly the same. The X Vive was maybe a little heavier, but honestly, you you want lightweight things. Um, but the plastic just feels really really cheap. They're kind of bulky, honestly. Um, they don't sit up nice. A, uh, along the guitar and uh, I had all sorts of uh, problem with crackling across a couple different guitars and signal breakup um, as I kind of I mean even I wasn't even that far now I do want to caveat that with uh, I have my setup in a very technological room and these just run on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency which uh, is common for wi-fi uh wi-fi networks it's common for bluetooth it's common for a lot of things that are in this room um i do want to uh see if i can find time to try this somewhere that's a little less cluttered with technology that might be eating up the those that uh frequency band um and see if that helps but uh as it stood right now, I'm the the signal wasn't great. The they don't feel great. They are very affordable, um, but I I don't know that it's worth it. Hey guys, editing Tommy here. Just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the uh, wireless system from Cat Audio. Uh, I have been able to play around with it a little bit more, and. What I have found is it looks like it was because it was in a room full of other technologies running on similar frequencies and things like that. Uh, I moved it to a different area and it worked a lot better. So as long as you can stay away from a lot of devices and things like that that are currently using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, uh, it should be fine. Um, another thing I noticed is if you go and there's no clear line of sight if there's like a wall in the way um that's gonna not help your situation um so if you're in a nice open area it looks like it works just fine i'm still not a huge fan of the design in general um it just doesn't look great like it, it doesn't like mold to the guitar at all um and it just kind of, I, I felt like it, I, my leg was constantly hitting it, and so it was constantly rotating it, and so then it became visible, and it's not the prettiest wireless system, so to have it visible is kind of a bummer, um, but so I, I was able to see, though, that if you have a nice line of sight, it does work actually pretty darn well. Um, I didn't have any problems as long as I had an uh, open line of sight. And then if I walk behind a wall, um, I would sometimes lose my signal 
uh, and it would get kind of crackly and stuff. Um, I never got a complete loss of signal. It would just get kind of interrupted and broken up and uh, kind of crackly. Um, I did also have a quick note about the uh, Connect 2, and that has to do with the direct monitor. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of the direct monitor system on here, and I understand that um, other brands do this as well, including, uh, from what I saw, Focusrite does this now with some of the cheaper Scarlets, and that is uh, you can't turn the direct monitoring off or on. Um, and so you either have the direct monitoring in both ears or you can have it set to only being in one ear while everything else plays in the other ear. And this isn't bad per se. I mean, some of it is just me having to get used to this as opposed to the old system where I could just turn off direct monitoring if I wanted to. Um, but it was kind of a bummer. I was doing some recording uh, for a for a, for a song project that I'm working on, and it was really hard to hear uh, the the track that I was recording on. Um, but the direct monitoring was so loud, it was I didn't want to really turn up the headphone volume. I, I use headphones, um, and I didn't want to turn up the headphone volume anymore because that would just deafen me with the direct monitoring signal, uh, my, my direct input signal, but I couldn't really hear the, the drums I was playing to or uh, other guitar tracks I was playing to. Uh, I had to go into my DAW and I had to really raise the volume on those tracks. So that was kind of a bummer. I don't know if modern, if other equivalent modern um, uh interfaces have that same thing from what i've seen they have the same layout of direct monitoring i don't know if they have that same volume uh discrepancy uh i'm inclined to say they probably do um that being said i do still recommend uh the connect 2 if you are getting into recording um it for the price it's absolutely brilliant still so there you go there's just I've since recording the video, I've been playing around with these tools a bit more and thought I should do an update. Back to back to the video. That being said, once again, they knocked it out of the park with the interface. Uh, it's absolutely great. 70 bucks. Highly recommend this. Don't recommend these so much. Um, it's not that they're the worst. Like I said, I do want to try these somewhere a little less technology crowded. I just didn't have the time to do that while filming. Um, if something comes up, I will go ahead and make a note of it. So there you go. Cat Audio, less than stellar wireless system. Awesome interface. Um, once again, huge shout out to the guys at Cat Audio for sending me these items to take a look at. It's greatly appreciated. And until next, oh, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the interface. Um, if you want to know more about recording, that kind of thing. Also, don't forget about our affiliate links in the description below uh it's a great way to help the channel while you do your normal shopping we have them with sweetwater we have them with toman we have them with amazon no additional cost to you guys it's it's a way to help support the channel and it'd be greatly appreciated until next time poor man pedals is out